Hello, everybody. So the conference of today is about how, with the Matarazzo project, we are doing our best to bring Brazil from an era of extraction into a very, very fruitful era of preservation. I want to introduce you the governor of Sao Paulo, uh, Jean Doria, who will start uh, uh, the presentation. Thank you. Well, Alex, thanks for the invitation. Thanks for having me. Uh, it's a great joy that we are together here at the COP26, celebrating this outstanding initiative for the city of Sao Paulo, which is the Cidade Matarazzo project. I started together with uh, you, Alex, many years ago as a mayor of the city of Sao Paulo. Now I am governor of the state of Sao Paulo. So very proud to be together in the last five years. Through the enterprising boldness of Alex, uh, surrounded by international renowned architects as, and experts as Genovelle, Stefano Mancuso, Brando Crespi, and Mikolas uh, Sekupovic, we can welcome a creative urbanist solution engaged with natural solutions and values. In addition, this eco enterprise, Alex, should bring 12 million people to Sao Paulo per year, promoting tourism and contributing to our economy. In particular, this intervention provides Sao Paulo with a careful recovery of its architectural heritage and the restoration of native vegetation in the heart of the largest financial center in Latin America, so relegated to large Brazilian cities. Sao Paulo is the major city in whole Latin America, together with Mexico City. As mayor of Sao Paulo, as I said, I had the opportunity to encourage several projects to make the city more functional, permeable, green, and accessible to the population. The impact of initiatives of this size and quality is in the line with the commitments we brought to this COP to the state of Sao Paulo, in particular with the goals of our climate action plan to neutralize carbon emissions by 2050 and promote mitigation and adapting to climate change in five directions. Renewable energy, systemic efficiency, resilience and nature-based solutions, infrastructure and environmental sanitation, and sustainable cities. All these axes show the sustainable construction purpose of the Cidade Matarazzo complex project. This event shows that we are united, governments, entrepreneurs, and civil society in the same purpose of transforming our economy in the direction of low carbon, preserving forests, rivers, cities with the new opportunities for green jobs and a better quality of life for future generations. Once again, Thank you very much, special to you, my dear friend, Alex Salah. Thank you. If I was um, asking you what defines Brazil today, what would you answer? An extraction economy. Since 500 years, Brazil has been focused on creating value from its extraordinary natural treasure. And the entire system is based on this. The welfare system of Brazil, the roads, the location of the cities, the name of the cities, the jobs that are being created, everything relies on an extraction economy. How the world thinks is going to change Brazil by attacking Brazil, the bad press around Brazil is not going to do anything good for Brazil. The only thing that Brazil needs to do is look forward, get some self-esteem and believe in its creative capacity. The future of Brazil, my dear friends, is not about fighting Brazil and fighting every time there is a forest fire. The future of Brazil is how to help help Brazil focus on its main asset, which are its people, its future. Brazil is the biggest green country of the world. And in this moment right now on the planet, Brazil has a gigantic opportunity to turn the number one country for regeneration. And this is what Matarazzo is here to help. This is why 14 years ago, we have decided to go into this extraordinary adventure of creating in the center of the most powerful city of Brazil, Sao Paulo, a place that will bring this this new culture. So what is Matarazzo? Matarazzo is a place that brings all the crowds of Brazil together. The full diversity here is expressed. We have a place to attract the elites, you know, the most important people who today harvest this extractive economy. We created a, a beautiful hotel, a gigantic uh, convention center. This is in the area of the tower that Jean Nouvel will present in a few minutes under maternity. We also have a place to attract all the business entrepreneurs that believe that green is a trillion dollar 
economy, and that's in the ayahuasca building. We bring people from all over the world and from Brazil who have green initiatives, who want to foster projects that will value the incredible green asset of Brazil. And then the third and the most important is the people of Brazil. We have to teach them the extraordinary culture, the extraordinary asset that they have in their hands. And for that, we have the campus, which is a gigantic village connected to Paulista Avenue, where people will discover the wonders and how we can live in a re regenerating life, how easy it is just switching from one life to the other. So today, the objective is to present you 10 big initiatives that the Matarazzo project is launching. And these 10 big initiatives is a work of, like I said, 14 years to prepare. So what you're going to see, you have to imagine that 10 years ago, we were already fighting to make it happen. And I mean, the universe has decided that we come exactly at the right moment on this planet, that all these initiatives are ready and matured and will happen. The first initiative is to talk about urban recycling. When one visits the place of Matarazzo, he can't help being struck by exactly what happened to me. It's an extraordinary place, full of soul, full of history. And um, it was built by the most important industrialist of all time, which was a Brazilian guy, Mr. Francesco Matarazzo, who in the early uh, 20th century had already 200 different industries that he was managing at the same time. In order to help progress in this country, he brought an extraordinary hospital, which was basically, and the name of the hospital, Matarazzo, the objective, the motto was bring to the poor the same health as to the rich. And that was a revolution when you think about it 120 years ago, when you go around Matarazzo, you can't help feeling this very good energy. I mean, that's actually three hectares, if you think about it, 30,000 square meter on the most valuable and the highest traffic area of Latin America on Paulista. And guess what? It was abandoned for 20 years when I arrived in the highest food traffic and the most valuable place of Brazil. How could a place so wonderful could be abandoned. Well, the story is very simple. The story is this place could only be preserved. And it was against all the logic of the Brazilian business at the time. Brazilians, as I explained, they are very good at extracting. They are not good at preserving. And that was the challenge. And I loved the challenge because that was exactly what the process that we want Brazil to go through. We could make it live in a huge scale already with Matarazzo. We could show that by preserving, we would create value. And on we went, you know, and so we brought hundreds of engineers, the best designers, people to rethink completely how to do this place. We taught 4,000 people in Brazil how to use their own material, how to do marcenery, how to do glass work, how to do metal work, how to use the local stones. We brought machines to cut the stones of Brazil, which are two and a half times harder than the stones in Italy. And this extraordinary adventure brought hundreds of people transferring knowledge to about 70 big companies that were completely re-engineered just to do that amazing job of preservation. And we brought amazing designers like Philip Stark, who had the patience over tens of, of travel to teach to 60 artists of Brazil how to express the fantastic Brazilian energy and to transmit his energy also to Brazilian designers to show what Brazil could do. So we create a gigantic bubble of creativity. And this bubble of creativity today has one great symbol. If I could take one symbol, it's our chapel, the Chapel of Santa Luzia. Uh, the Chapel of Santa Luzia is a very small chapel. You know, we had to do a gigantic excavation below because to, to let the old buildings above, we have to create a city below. And all my bankers and my engineers said, Alex, it's so much better to destroy it and rebuild it. Because of course, the cost of maintaining it is about 10 times the price of the cost of rebuilding it. And no, we said we have to keep the soul of what's in there because in that church, when you go inside, you can feel the family is full of hope because the family, maternity next door, people are waiting for their child. You can hear the children, you know, crying for the baptism. You have all this soul and all this energy of the Italian community. 500,000 people living in Sao Paulo today were born in that place and you cannot 
destroy this place. And so we rejuvenate that church. And what we did, we built below that church. And people call it now in Sao Paulo the flying church because some image will show here the church is flying above stilts of 40 meters. And that was that church is going to be reconsecrated on the 13th of November by the Cardinal Don Odilo, and uh, it will be given back to the city. And I can tell you, this church is full of soul and full of pride, and it's a perfect example to see how preservation can bring value. Because you see, and that's how to conclude this first initiative. I mean, what we wanted to show, and we were very successful at it, is that by preserving what was there against all odds, against the recommendation of the investors, the bankers, and all my wealthy Brazilian friends who told me, Alex, don't touch this. This is, you're never going to make money unless you bring towers, is we have from a place that nobody wanted, that was what we could call a urban garbage, abandoned. We have created the most valuable asset of Brazil because today, Matarazzo is the most valuable asset of Brazil. And this is exactly the path that we want Brazil to follow, Brazil going from extraction to preservation. The second initiative, which I think is very important, was to bring a symbol to the city. You know, in France, we have Paris, we have our Eiffel Tower. It's a demonstration of French engineering at its best. And 100 years later, I mean, more than 100 years later, actually, 140 years later, people still wonder how people could put that together. And that makes our city, you know, proud. And Sao Paulo today doesn't have a real symbol. It has a fantastic museum called the Mass, but it doesn't come through as an international symbol. And so my idea was to say, okay, how can we make something that will bring this new energy, this new self-esteem that Brazil is the number one, the number one green power of the world, and that Sao Paulo, its capital, is going to show this very strong. And that's why I turned to Jean Nouvel, who I love because since 25 years, we have the, an amazing relationship. Relationship, I invited Don John to create a project, a project that would change the energy of this city, which is made of 5,000 towers. Let me introduce you, Jean Nouvel, ladies and gentlemen. Oh, écoutez, je suis ici donc à l'initiative d'Alex et c'est pour moi un grand honneur, évidemment, et une grande responsabilité aussi parce qu'il s'agit de montrer, sur un cas particulier qui est celui de Sao Paulo, que les villes ne doivent pas s'appuyer sur les généralistes. Or, actuellement, les villes du monde sont toutes construites sur les mêmes plans urbains à peu près et en parachute les mêmes immeubles qui sont préfabriqués et prépensés sur toutes les villes. Sao Paulo n'a pas échappé à ça et l'architecte, en fait, le rôle, de l le rôle sociétal de l'architecte a, a été éliminé, c'est-à-dire que, que, que les architectes n'ont plus d'influence plus sur la politique urbaine et, et, sur les, et sur la situation et sur le sens du développement euh, sur, sur 20 ou 30 ans, ce qu'ils devraient faire. Le, le projet que je propose, c'est une incitation pour Sao Paulo à, à partir de Matarazzo. Et ce qui m'intéresse, moi, c'est l'âme de Sao Paulo. De travailler en fait, je ne crois, je ne crois qu'aux situations et aux rencontres. Et c'est à partir de là que et c'est à partir de là qu'on peut arriver progressivement à stopper le mal vivre urbain qui est planétaire une fois encore dans toutes les grandes villes. Matarazzo, en fait, la tour de Matarazzo, c'est une anticipation réalisée. Mais ce n'est pas une utopie. Une ville s'imagine en, en fonction et en relation avec sa géographie et son histoire. Et Sao Paulo doit se servir de ses atouts, et en particulier de son climat et de sa végétation, pour développer quelque chose qui lui est spécifique et quelque chose que la plupart des villes du monde, pour 99%, ne peuvent pas développer. Une fois encore, chaque ville planétaire n'a que faire d'architecture clonée, de bureaux et de logements qui sont parachutés. Donc Sao Paulo doit doit s'appuyer sur son propre ADN et affirmer ses, ses différences. Et à, à partir donc d'une vie d'un plan de vision de la ville, on peut rêver d'un Sao Paulo qui se dé, qui se développe et se modifie petit à petit en se servant des atouts climatiques et géographiques et de son histoire. Matarazzo Towers, c'est un symbole, c'est une incitation à, à développer sur d'autres types de logements et de bureaux des objectifs qui sont comparables. En, en ce sens, ce n'est pas un modèle, on ne veut pas cloner ça, il faut encore, il n'y a, 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 a pas de généralité, mais c'est à partir de là, et il est évident que tous les, que tous les logements ne peuvent pas se permettre d'héliporter de, de, des, des, des arbres de, de, de 15 mètres, mais on n'a pas de, de ça pour du logement social, on peut poser des, des, des petits arbres, ils mettront 5 ou 6 ans de plus à, 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 à pousser. Donc, il faut rester dans la logique 
de, de, la, de la synergie avec la géographie et de celle du plaisir de vivre. L'architecture est là pour ça. C'est un art de vivre, c'est un plaisir de vivre, et ce plaisir de vivre, il faut le développer à partir d'une situation. Matarazzo, le, le, le projet général, est, est formidable de par sa réno, le, le, le processus de modification et de, et de valorisation de l'histoire et, et, et l'actualisation, en somme, de tous les bâtiments qui existent et, 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 et l'invention des bâtiments d'aujourd'hui. Ce n'est pas uniquement un problème d'architecture et d'esthétique, c'est un problème qui concerne tout le monde et c'est le problème du plaisir de vivre quelque part et de l'unicité de ces types de plaisirs qui ont été développés à partir des atouts de sa peau, à partir des atouts qui sont là et qui sont formidables. Donc voilà, ce, 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 ce point-là, c'est un, une bouteille à la mer pour espérer que cette ligne de pensée puisse contribuer à accélérer la modification et de, de l'histoire de ça. Merci. We are very proud. It's been the most complicated construction in the history of Brazil, according to our uh, construction companies. But I truly believe now that we see the trees arriving, that uh, we achieved our goal, which is to bring to São Paulo a green vertical symbol in the middle of the city. And also an adventure that we have been sharing. I mean, 12 years preparing this moment with Brazilian people, working in the forest, bringing the best technicians of the world, because these trees cannot stay there above with wind of 200 kilometers. There's so much technology involved in that. And that technology is for sure going to be reused for future urban project across the country. The third initiative is the Ayahuasca Hub. And um, it's about bringing to Brazil this extraordinary trillion dollar industry, which is the green industry. We all know that we have faced in the past few years the extraordinary boom of the digital industry. I mean, the, the green industry, which is about saving our humanity, is going to be even more gigantic. And that's a great opportunity for Brazil. And so how do we make it happen? Because let's every Everybody knows business is complicated in Brazil. I cannot deny it. So how do we make it simple? How do we attract people? Well, the just let me explain to you what ayahuasca means because ayahuasca is an ancient uh, indigenous medicine and in this conference you will see how by again linking back to the roots and preserving those roots we create a bright future for Brazil and and this ancient medicine which is shared by the shamans with the tribes is there to help the people connect with nature and uh, our architect Rudy Ricciotti which also is an uh, other very famous architect went and did the ritual with me and after that you know he was inspired and he said let's not make something complicated. I mean, we have to reconnect the Brazil business with nature. Let's call it the ayahuasca, and I'm going to make you an ayahuasca building. That's the building. It's made out of ayahuasca roots, and it's going to be planted with real ayahuasca growing on it. And uh, if the green economy is the largest business revolution in the planet, well, Brazil, as the greenest country, needs to take a big chunk of it and participate. And without Brazil, this revolution anyway will not be productive. So for that to happen, you need to build a backbone. You know, it just doesn't happen. It doesn't mushroom. Like you need to create the conditions. You need to have the financial support for new companies to blossom. You need to have the right advisors to help big companies to change. I mean, every company in Brazil is concerned. And we're opening the doors to everybody, guys like Petro brass, you have to think how, what is their future, how they are going to re-engineer this, this future before the future come at them. Big companies in Brazil all have to answer the same question. So that's why we create the Ayahuasca Hub. It's a gigantic place for 1,200 companies and NGO to get together and share their knowledge and get the energies together to make this change happen. Because when you get positive energy together, you multiply the energy and the Ayahuasca is there for that. The ayahuasca building is there for that. The ayahuasca building also has around it and below directly connected 7,000 square meter of event space where we will host the biggest event for that change. We plan to, to organize and we're already in preparation for that to organize a gigantic event 
of uh, new energies for Brazil. We're preparing an event of new mobility to invite all the mayors from all the countries, everybody who is involved in that, to see, okay, guys, let's think about it now because that's huge infrastructure for this country. How do we get the money? How do we make this happen? How do we meet the people who have the technology at hand? But also another big show about food because food is one of the biggest polluters. If you look at the three number one carbon generator, energy, food, and transportation. So we are going to have shows for each of them. And then we are going to have a gigantic positive economy forum, the first of which will take place in October 2022, headed by Mr. Jacques Attali, uh, where we will invite the great thinkers to see, okay, how do we create from that green economy a positive economy? The ayahuasca building is only the tip of the iceberg. We are preparing a complete organization, which includes in the University of Sao Paulo, a laboratory, a scientific development to help do studies, research, to grow all the opportunities that are available inside Brazil to help this green transformation, but also another hub for companies to stay, to put their, uh, an incubator outside Sao Paulo. The fourth initiative is, to me, I think is what the most important. You see, our time is confronting one of the deepest crises for survival of the human race. What we all know here, we're all in this room and all the people, thousands of people connected today. I mean, we all come from from this 20th century and we're all barbarians. We've been destroying this planet. We are conscious of that. Every time we take our car, every time we drink a bottle of water in a plastic bottle, whatever we do, we are damaging the mere reason why we are here, which is our mother nature. But we've been raised like that. Of course, it's great that the big presidents of the world are getting together, pouring money into green economy. And it's great that there is some fantastic scientific people inventing extraordinary solutions. But the big change of technology and the trillion dollars of the stock market poured into green economy is not the change that is expected. We have to change as human beings, and this change will only happen because we bring a new culture. It's about culture. It's the fundamental of it. It's not about being more clever, being faster. It's about us. How do we entertain that relationship with nature? Maybe we should learn more about nature. Maybe the organization of nature, and Stefano Mancuso certainly will talk about that. Us as human beings, we create pyramidal organization. Nature creates horizontal ecosystems. Maybe we have to learn from this. And, and so the big question is, why do we have to demolish and extract when we can revive and preserve? Why speak about green technology? economy when what we have to speak about is a green society. This is what we have to become. And this is a great cultural movement. At Matarazzo, this is our number one mission. We create this gigantic campus where we bring millions of people. Every month, more than one million visitors will participate into our cultural machine. And our cultural machine is here to help in 360 degrees, we are working with the best painters, the best artists, the best music people, and we have gigantic uh, concert rooms for 1,800 people, the largest exhibition room in the city. Outside, we use the parks to make museums. We have a gastronomy theater. We have a huge equipment so that every people who visit will find at least one good reason to change. Our objective with that culture machine is to convert our normal people, our normal citizens of extraction into a green people. And if, if we have one artist having the right language for the right person, then we bring that change. The fifth initiative that we are making happen is a gigantic green urban invasion. We believe we have to change completely the cities. Like Sao Paulo, 22% of the space of Sao Paulo is roads filled with cars, which we all know are going to disappear. So how, how, do, we, how do we now, right now, bring that change? Not wait until it has happened and that every Everybody is moving into little electric eggs to make the change. Why not bring Sao Paulo at the forefront? And this is the magic about Brazil. Everything is difficult, but everything is possible. And we can make it happen. And, and so if you look at us, you have the Matarazzo project. And the Matarazzo project has been fighting for six years. Mr. Penido here in this room can witness that. To be able to uh, create a park that was linking Matarazzo to Paulista. And then uh, we managed to work with the uh, 
uh, with the mayor and uh, we convinced them to put the park in the area that were not abundant but not in good value at the optimal value and then we took over the park and then we took over the park Trianon and then we took over the park Mario Kovas and when you see from high what you see here you see an avenue an avenue called Paulista surrounded now by green and our extraordinary objective is to actually invade Paulista and we're already working with the city hall on that we're working on the with the city hall to transform Paulista it's a gigantic requalification process and we are inviting as of next year a very big public audiences so that everybody can participate now if you look at the park and in that park in fact what we are going to do is we are going to bring people back into nature we are going to make them understand what it is so for that we invite one of the best Brazilian artists to do a gigantic installation 185 meter long where people will go inside the installation and discover the different levels of the forest so they will go in the installation as human beings of the 20th century and hopefully go out of the installation as human beings of the 21st century understand the interactions with human beings we're also in that same park we're using technology enhanced technology so that when you visit the park you will understand the interactions the language of the trees, how they work, etc., etc. The other park is Mario Kovas. In the Mario Kovas Park, we create a symbol. Mario Kovas Park is exactly on the highest foot traffic area of Latin America. This is Consolação. There is only on the tube station 200,000 people per day commuting there. It's the highest place. And in this little park, in front of it, a fantastic symbol, you have the largest McDonald's of Sao Paulo. And in front of that McDonald's, guess what? We're going to bring a farm. We're we're going to create an agroforestal farm where people, actually homeless people, are going to grow fruit, are going to grow vegetable. And we're going to bring that to the city as a signal, say, hey guys, there's a future. Agribusiness can change, it can create jobs. And for the children, we are going to host 710 classes per year, six classes per day in the place to teach them what is new food production. And for the adults, we are going to have agro agro yoga program for the people in the neighborhood to learn how to communicate with plants and more important they will learn that there is a god behind each plant and they will learn to, to talk to each of those gods one by one in the last area which is uh, Paza Guzman and we found out that there was temple it was a copy of a, a Roman temple which is the oldest temple and it's the Vesta temple and so we're going to bring back in that temple the femininity and we are going to have 12 women who are going to take care of the light to bring back femininity in the city which was built by man everybody on the statue in Sao Paulo is a man Banderanch are men Sao Paulo doesn't have the Joan of Arc and we're going to bring the Vesta temple back to life so this is just crazy but true this is the la one of the four largest cities in the world and this is actually happening there because we work together with the state with the mayors and we make it happen and so next year this will be the most advanced green urban project in the planet Sixth initiative, guys, I want to introduce you somebody that is very dear to me because I've been admiring these guys for a year. I mean, he's the inspiration for all of us, Stefano Mancuso. Just to tell you my personal story, reading the books of Stefano, I realized that plants were human beings. And that's all I needed to learn. And when you look at things from this angle, well, things get different because you start to pay respect. And when you start to pay respect, it's another level of relationship that starts. And we are here in this world because nature has decided and nature has always fed us and we need to take care of us. And, and Stefano has an extraordinary initiative that we're bringing in Matarazzo, the first air purifying system, all our buildings purified by plants. And our great objective is to do the same on Paulista. We're going to purify the air of Paulista with plants. Stefano Mancuso, we let you welcome. Thank you so much for being with us. Thank you. Thank you very much, Alex, for the introduction and for the invitation to collaborate with you to such a fantastic project that is Ciudad de Materazzo. When you, for the first time, asked me to participate to such a wonderful event, I was very happy because for me, Ciudad de Materazzo will be a model, a new way to understand how we can create a new town. And this is something of paramount importance 
importance today. So just let me uh, make a, a small introduction about what we are facing in the planet. In the, seven, in the 1970, 30% of population was living in urban areas and 70% of the population in the world was living in a rural area. Today, in uh, North and Latin America and uh, in Europe, uh, around 80% of population lives in urban areas. So we changed the way we live our speeches is a very different species with respect to few years ago. The change was so fast that didn't allow us to accommodate and to change the, the, the way we live. And uh, urban areas account for just 2-3% of the surface of the planet. And from this small amount of surface, we produce between 75 and 80% of the CO2, the urban areas are producing around 80% of the pollution of the planet and they consume 80% of the resources of the planet. So, in few words, it's incredibly obvious that if we want to solve the problem of our surviving, the surviving of our species on this planet, we need to change the way we project and we imagine our town and how they are projected until today. Until today, the idea that we have of a, of a town is of a place completely different from the rest of the nature. So we have the idea that the city, the town is the place of human and outside of the town is the place of the nature because we understand ourselves as being outside and above, of course, of the nature. But this is not true. We are part of the nature. And to solve, to really solve the problem of our next years, we have to, to look at the nature and mostly to plants. So in Ciudad de Materasso, we will use the power of plants to solve technological problems. As you said, Alex, one of the things that we will do in uh, Ciudad de Materasso will be to purify all the air inside, indoor, of, inside of each building by using a new technology that is completely plant-based. We call it, it air factory, but in fact is just something resembling a greenhouse but is able to purify the indoor air by removing around 99.6% of all pollutants. If you think that we spend 80% of our time indoor and that the quality of the air indoor is from 3 to 5 times worse than the equivalent quality of the air outside, so it's really a fantastic approach to have the chance to purify the air for such a big amount of people just by using plant. And in principle, well, what we are doing today in Ciudad de Materasso indoor can be done even for the whole town, for the whole town of Sao Paulo, Sao Paulo, outdoor. So we can, in principle, imagine big buildings completely filled by plants that are purifying the air bred by the citizen of Sao Paulo. And I want also, Alex, to thank you because you, many times during your talks, you saw the importance to change our mind, to change our culture, and to use plants for what they can do. Now, just imagine we are in Brazil. In Brazil, the most gigantic catalog of plant species that we can imagine, and around 50% of that plant species, they need to be studied yet. And we can find any kind of solution to all technological problems of humanity just by using the Brazilian plants. Plants have the expertise, plants have the nature, plants have a huge number of plant species that are there to help us. And wow. just let me finish with a, a small note. Yesterday, the G20, in the final declaration, we had for the first time a very important statement that the big leaders of the world, they are committing themselves to plant one trillion trees in the next 10 years. And uh, I think a 
again on this Brazil can be the leading country of this initiative. Brazil have the plans, have the space, and have the, the expertise and the skills to do that very easily in a short time and, let's say, putting to the service of the world that incredibly richness of the plant system, of the Brazilian plant system. Thank you, Alex. Yeah, thank you so much, Stefano. And I'm going to go directly to introduce you Brando Crespi, who is the leading this initiative of reforestation that we have with an extraordinary technique, which is called biochar, which I think a lot of people are going to talk during this COP about. And Brando has been advocating biochar for many, many years. We have very little time, so please, can you tell us about this initiative and, and this beautiful story of biochar? Ladies and gentlemen, Brando Crespi in two minutes. I'd like to tell you about something which is still very mysterious to most people, but it has been called by James Lovelock, who's one of the great ecologists of our times and the father of the Gaia hypothesis, the best chance of humanity to survive on this planet. So the story really actually starts in Brazil, in the Amazon, 8,000 years ago, when uh, Amerindians looked at, at what happened when ground charcoal was added to the soil. And that brought about extraordinary changes in the biology of the soil, which allowed for the cities, the extraordinary 50,000 people cities. Francisco de Orellana was the first white man who came down the Rio Negro and the Amazon saw. And now we know that there were probably 50 million people living in the Amazon at the time, in cities which were cleaner and better designed than London was at the time. And this was because they had discovered that by adding organic matter, the food waste, and adding ground charcoal to the soil, it created something which today we call terra preta. And that allows for increases in agricultural production, which are extraordinary. There are cases where studies would show that when you add biochar to the soil, the increase is 900%. That's very rare, but generally you can double or triple food production. As you're doing that, you're adding actually carbon. You've seen a picture of the nanostructure. This is some of our work at Pronatura, but we can take desert sand. We do take desert sand in the Sahara and create 11 harvests a year by adding cow dung, sometimes compost, but biochar. And uh, what we're doing now is we are actually bringing back to Brazil through modern day technology with something called pyrolysis, a technology which will profoundly change the agricultural nature of three out of five different types of soils. This is where we already work around the world. The Chinese have totally embraced biochar. They understand the value. We've been studying biology and especially biodiversity for many, many years. And I will say that Pronatura was born in Brazil. We are the only southern NGO which since 1985 has now gone international and worked in 63 countries. You can see we've doubled rice production and this is when you take biochar and you look at it through an electron microscope this is the kind of structure it has that porous structure allows for water and then bacteria to go in the last thing I will say this is a it is a pyrolysis machine so we're going to put one just outside Sao Paulo and one of the advantages as Stefano was saying earlier where we want to plant a trillion trees well that is absolutely necessary but we cannot wait 11 to 15 years for those trees to start absorbing carbon. By adding biochar on average, and there are meta studies around this, we can increase the growth of trees by 43%. The last thing I will say is that this works very much as a carbon sequestration approach because one ton of biochar added to the soil equals to 2.7, 2.9 tons of carbon, which means 
that the carbon markets today can help fund biochar projects. Microsoft has bought credits based on biochar, and so has Spotify, and many more companies are going to do this. It's one of the most effective ways to sequester carbon, and it is incredibly interesting and useful to deal with food security, with biodiversity, and we will show this in one of Alex's farms just outside San Paolo, but all our food is going to be powered by the use of biochar, compost, and other organic products. I think I'll leave it at that, but welcome you all to come and see our biochar production on our farm near San Paolo. Thank I you. wanted to introduce you our 10th and last initiative, which is very important, is about bringing wealth and nature to the widest category of people and make it popular. And for that, in our trips around the world, trying to find solutions, I met this amazing person. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome Mr. Mikola Shetlovsky. Thank you so much, my friend. So thank you so much. Thank you to the governor for supporting this project. Uh, thank you, Alexander, for inviting us. Uh, thank you for the translation. It was actually very good. Uh, thank you for this amazing introduction to James Lovelock. James Lovelock wouldn't be anybody without whom? Lynn Margulis. Lynn Margulis that wrote The Symbiotic Planet. It was uh, very interesting because 1967, she was the young wife, young scientist, evolution biologist of the most famous scientist in the world back then, an astrophysicist, Carl Sagan. And while Carl Sagan and James Lovelock were working together on the first Mars mission. They were thinking about how atmosphere is created and it was actually the collaboration between Carl Sagan's wife, Lynn Margulis, and James Lovelock that first time zoomed out of the planet and understood this planet as an interconnected living being and this is exactly the Gaia theory that you are referencing and that needs to be the starting point of a completely reframing of design processes. Because when we understand that all life on the planet is connected, is a metabolistic process, Process, and we are only a part of it, then every design process that we are, every line that an architect is doing on a piece of paper potentially is more destructive than creative. So we have to assess every single design process, every single investment, every single idea from the understanding that life is already there and our main life support system is not the building. The building is only giving us shelter. The building is giving us temperature control. We are actually building for comfort. We are not building for survival, but while we are building building for comfort, we are destroying our primary life support system. No building that we have here on the planet would let us survive on Mars. So we have to think with the same categories, because we are all obsessed with rockets, with technology, with you know going to other planets, there's billions of investment in this direction. But we have to understand that when we not design like we would be on Mars on planet Earth, we will create Mars on planet Earth before we reach Mars. And this is how we came up with the concept of the well-being city. And it was incredible when we met Alexander that basically he was already building this concept. You see here some f videos of our facilities and our well-being city project that was just approved by the Prime Minister of Ontario so we will build on Ontario's place a giant well-being centre for the city because this is another part of the One Health perspective of the Gaia theory is that the natural environment and its impact is connected to our health because we are nature. So everything what we are building is affecting our health. One example, COVID-19, we wouldn't need to close down any business, any society, we wouldn't need any social distancing if we wouldn't have some preconditions because COVID is only severe if it comes with preconditions, if it attacks a body that is already declined in its immune system. We can say today that vitamin deficiency, obesity and all this other preconditions are completely caused by the way how we are living in cities. We have in uh, Dubai, 80% of the population has an immune deficiency because their skin is not producing enough of the hormone vitamin D. In a country where we have almost the whole year full sun exposure. Why? Because everybody is inside, because this is how the city is created without understanding of nature. And this is maybe the last thing because there's only short time and we need to finish this event. But um, Stefano Mancuso told me that we have a nature blindness. We are not seeing plants. We are only seeing what we are creating ourselves. This is exactly what we need to change. We need to see plants that are constituting over 80% of the biomass on this planet as our main life support system. And because the city became the main form of life for humans, the main framework 
of life for humans on this planet, we need to bring this nature back because it is not anymore there. It is already completely destroyed. So we need to create cities. And here the last point is about business because this will be the biggest economy to create an environment for humans, for public health that is not hostile for us. The recreation of nature will be the biggest economy and uh, the largest investments necessary. And this needs to happen in the next 25 years. So the transformation of our economies is something that we need to bet on. Because we will win when we do this bet. When we are not doing this bet, we will all lose. So thank you very much, Alexander, because you have to build it. You cannot just have the idea. You have not just have the scientific evidence. You have to make it real. And it's much more complex than any other industry because it needs to recreate something that is much more complex than any technology that we developed, what is nature. And yeah, with the big thanks to you and also to the governor for your support of this project because it won't work without politics, economy and science and NGOs to work together. And this is amazing that we came together exactly in this, in this constellation. Thank you very much for bringing us together and uh, looking forward to the next steps. My dear friends, this, uh, this conference is now closed. Just one message to finish. We meet every day and this COP is going to be about that. You know, complaining about how we destroy nature, complaining about how big companies are horrible, complaining about everything. I think now we have to stop complaining. We have to start action. And Matarazzo project, 14 years ago I decided to put my money risk my family and everything and bring all these people around in this adventure today it's coming out it's a reality I think this is much more important than long debates changing the city is about action not about discussion thank you very much Bye.